or um, Model Theory and Combin Combinatorics Workshop. Our first speaker is Ting Shang Zhou, who will be speaking on Schlit Schlitting's theorem for approximate subgroups. Um, and it's also Ting Shan's birthday, so happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so um, hello everyone. I'm Ping Shan, and um, uh, thank yeah, thank Caroline for the yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> um, so I'm from University of Münster, and today I'm going to talk about um, Schlichting theorem for approximate subgroups. So I would like to um, thank um, first thank the organizers very much for inviting me to give a talk here, and it's very honored to give the first talk. Uh, in this workshop. Um, okay, I'm, yeah, so this, um, uh, uh, so this topic, uh, so it was a project I did um, when I was a PhD student um, under supervision of Frank Wagner. And um, I think the, uh, it fits the um, theme of this um, workshop and I haven't talked about it much. Uh, so I think it would be nice to talk about it. Um, okay, let's start. Um, so let me start with um, Schlichting's theorem. Um, Schlichting's theorem basically says that uh, if you have a family of subgroups that uh, each of them are not far away from each other, then you can find a canonical sub subgroup that are far, uh, not far away from the whole family. So it is not far away from any uh, any subgroup of in this family. Um, so uh, let me state it more precisely. So let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G such that um, if you take uh, H, uh, if you take the conjugate of H under any gr group element little g in G, then the intersection of H uh, with this conjugate um, HG then the subgroup has a bounded uh, index in the original group H. So you, there is a uniform bound N. Then there is a normal subgroup N that uh, is commensurate with H. Uh, namely, uh, H intersect N has um, both fine, uh, has finite index in both H and N. And, um, so Schlichting's theorem has um, a lot of generalizations, uh, not only to groups. Um, so let me state um, generalization to groups uh, by uh, Wagner. So let G be a group and F be a family of subgroups. Suppose there is an um, uniform uh, upper bound N such that, um, so if you take two uh, subgroups in this family H and H prime, uh, then their intersection H intersect H prime um, uh, has index, uh, uh, the index of the intersection H intersect H prime um, has uh, uh, in, in H is bounded by N. Then there is um, a canonical object, namely there is N, a subgroup of G commensurate with any um, subgroup H in F. Moreover, um, it's canonical in the following sense. So N is invariant on all automorphisms of G stabilizing um, F setwise. So moreover, we know um, uh, what more or less what N is. So it is contained in the uh, group subgroup generated by this family and it contains um, the intersection of um, or the, uh, of the family and uh, actually N is a finite extension of finite intersection of groups in F. Um, so uh, it's a generalization of the um, original Schlichting theorem because you can just take F to be um, a family uh, of conjugates of H and if they are commensurable with each other then you can find a normal subgroup. And, um, so uh, it was generalized by Neumann to subsets of bounded symmetric difference and uh, in the same paper by Wagner to vector spaces and fields. 
And more recently, it was generalized by uh, Benyakov and Wagner to a much more uh, wider context to type definable group sets, uh, vector spaces, and fields. Um, so this is, yeah, this phenomenon is uh, more like um, like a um, uh, fixed point theorem in some systems or in some lattices. Okay, uh, so now let's go to the approximate subgroups part. Uh, let me first give the definition. Um, let G be a group and K be a natural number that will be a parameter. So a subset A of G is called a K approximate subgroup. If um, uh, it contains an identity and it's symmetric, so uh, A inverse equals A and um, and A is almost closed under uh, product. So there is a finite set X, uh, subset X of G, and uh, the size uh, of which the size is bounded by K such that uh, A times A uh, is contained in XA. So uh, A times A is contained in at most K left translates of A itself. And uh, here we, uh, yeah, uh, in the definition, we do not assume A is finite. And um, so examples of approximate subgroups are uh, subgroups and uh, cosets of subgroups AH such that um, H is normalized by A. And in um, abelian groups, for example, in the uh, integers, um, the typical approximate subgroups are um, intervals or generalized arithmetic progressions. So what are generalized arithmetic progressions are? So they are um, uh, of the form uh, uh, of the, uh, so a generalized arithmetic progression of dimension Z are um, the following set generalized by um, generators X1 up to XD and you can write um, the sums of x1 up to xd and you use them, uh, you use uh, xi at most ni times and ni are just um, some bounded uh, number, natural number. And these will be um, two to the d approximate subgroups. Um, so approximate subgroups are one of the uh, uh, most important object to study in additive combinatorics because um, although the definition is um, not very, it doesn't have a very long history, but um, it is because it's uh, related to, for example, in um, abelian groups, it's related to subsets of small doubling and subsets of small doubling has a lo uh, long history um, of study because um, of Feynman's theorem. And um, so the structure of finite, uh, and for general groups, it's related to uh, sets, uh, subsets of small tripling. Um, so um, the structure of finite approximate subgroups are, um, rather, rather, yeah, I would say, uh, we're understood by uh, two Provence theorems. Uh, one is uh, Feynman's theorem for the abelian case, and the other is um, the Guia Green Tau theorem for the structural theorem of a finite approximate subgroups. So uh, let me state it here. Um, for the statement, I need another definition. Uh, so let G be a group and AB be subsets of G, and we say AB are uncommensurable for some natural number N if there is some set X. Um, uh, of size bounded by N such that A is covered by um, XB and B is containing XA. So A is contained in uh, at most N many left translates of B and B is containing at most N many left translates of A. So they are morally uh, equivalent or comparable. Um, okay, so for the finite abel uh, finite approximate subgroups in abelian case are the famous Feynman-Husha uh, theorem. 
So let G be abelian and A be a finite A K approximate subgroup. Then A is OK1 commensurable here. OK1 is just a parameter that um, a constant that uh, depend on K but doesn't depend on A. So A is OK1 commensurable with a coset progression H plus K where H is a subgroup of G and P is a generalized arithmetic progression of dimension uh, OK1. Um, so because H plus P is and uh, yes, OK1 uh, commensurable with A. So in particular, H will be a finite subgroup and H plus P will be small. So it, the size of it will be comparable to the size of A. And the general case um, is by um, Puya Green Tao and um, uh, based on the work of Kuchowski around the same time. Um, so it says the following, a G be a group and A be a finite K approximate subgroup. Then A is OK1 commensurable with a coset neural progression HA, where H is um, subgroup of G and A normalizes H such that um, HA quotient H, so it will be um, in the quotient group um, G quotient H. Um, in this quotient group, it is a new progression. So what is a new progression? It's a generalized, uh, generalization of um, generalized arithmetic progression. Um, so a new progression is of the form so it has D generators, X1 up to XD, and um, you have lengths N1 up to ND. And uh, this progression is uh, or contains all the words generated by X1 up to XD, and you can use XI or XI inverse um, at most NI times between them. Moreover, uh, because it's called new progression because um, X1, XD generates a nipotent group. Um, yeah, so any finite K proximal subgroup is commensurable with um, finite um, subgroup uh, times uh, um, something. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, so it, so this uh, quotient will be something like um, generalized arithmetic progression. Okay, um, so um, so our question is, um, does Schlichting theorem holds for approximate subgroups? So we want to say if you have uh, in an ambient group, if you have a family of approximate subgroups that are not far away from each other, then there should be a canonical one. Um, okay, so we need to define first, what does it mean to be uh, not far away from each other? Um, so here's the definition, a collection of subsets and X in a group G is called a family of uniformly uncommensurable K approximate subgroups for some natural numbers k and n, if um, if any uh, subset x in this family is a k approximate subgroup, and it is uncommensurable with any other um, subset in this family, and uh, the main theorem is uh, what we expected. So the unit uh, the um, the canonical object exists. So let X be a family of uniformly unconvertible K approximate subgroups in a group G. Then there is an approximate subgroup H um, in G such that H is commensurable with any um, approximate subgroup in this family and it is invariant on all automorphisms of G stabilizing X set wise. And in fact, um, H will be an OK and one approximate subgroup and uh, OK and one can measurable with any um, subset X in the family. 
Um, here are two remarks. Um, the first one is that both bonds are not explicit. We know it exists by, um, by the standard model theoretic um, method. So we, uh, so they are obtained by taking arch product and then applying Walsh theorem. So it's not explicit. And uh, if you remember in the case of groups, so the canonical object uh, uh, subgroup you obtain is, um, is a finite uh, extension of finite intersections of um, subgroups in this family. But um, in the case of approximate subgroup, subgroups, um, uh, you need to take uh, infinite union of finite intersections of some large powers of subsets in X. So you need to take um, large products um, of subsets and uh, of approximate subgroups in this family. And we actually don't know how large you need to take. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So in the in the ultra product, is the approximate subgroup actually a group or is it still an approximate subgroup or something? It's still an approximate subgroup. Um, uh, thanks. Okay. Um, okay, so let me give two uh, examples and uh, to get more um, intuition. So the first example is very trivial. So um, you take G to be uh, the rational uh, numbers um, and the additive group. And the family are basically, uh, the family of approximate subgroups are basically just uh, intervals. Uh, so M from M to M plus one, and you make it um, closed under uh, inverse and contains the identity, identity. So this family will be a family of three uniform, five approximate subgroups. So the, yeah, these are just some numbers. And um, however, there are not that much um, uh, automorphisms of Q that uh, stabilize, uh, yeah, that, um, stabilizing this uh, family setwise. So the only automorphisms are the identity map and the map sends um, X to uh, minus X. Therefore, you can take any element, uh, any approximate subgroup in this family or just take any interval symmetric. Um, then it will be an invariant object commensurable with X. Uh, however, we can modify this um, example a little bit and to get a uh, somewhat non-trivial example. So you take the arch power of Q uh, for some non-principal arch field to U, and then you take, uh, then we have this um, set of infinitesimals, which are elements that are actually close to zero, but I'm, uh, yeah they can contain zero, but uh, not necessarily zero. So this is um, a set. And then, uh, so you define, uh, we define this um, new family X prime uh, to be essentially the same as before. So we take uh, the intervals uh, between M to M plus one, but we perturb it a little bit by these infinitesimal elements. So you take M plus, um, eta uh, and m plus one plus epsilon for eta and epsilon in, uh, in uh, infinitesimal elements. Then this family, uh, and then you close it under uh, inverse and uh, contains the identity elements. Then this family will be a family of five uniform, five approximate subgroups. Um, but by, um, by taking that to power, uh, we get a lot of more automorphisms of uh, the group that's stabilizing the uh, family setwise. So namely we have uh, the maps uh, that sends X to one plus epsilon X or sends X to minus uh, uh, 
one plus epsilon x for some epsilon in the infinitesimal element. Then this will fix uh, the family set wise. Uh, now, if you take one element in this, um, uh, yeah, if you take one uh, approximate subgroup in this family, then it will not be, it will be no longer canonical. So it will not be fixed by this, uh, these automorphisms. Um, so what you can do is you take the infinite intersections of um, intervals around zero. Um, um, so for example, you can take uh, um, infinite intersections of the uh, intervals of the form minus one minus epsilon and uh, one plus epsilon for any epsilon in uh, the uh, infinitesimal sets. Or you can take the infinite union of them. And these will be invariant objects commensurable with X, uh, uh, with the original family X prime. And yeah, you cannot obtain any um, invariant object by just finite uh, intersection of finite union. And, um, and this example also um, shows um, you have to go to some finite product because if you take uh, any finite, yeah, any two intersection of um, the approximate subgroups uh, intervals in this uh, family X prime, then they have, um, usually they only have uh, zero as in, in, then in the intersection, you only get zero. But you, if you take um, uh, these element, uh, if you, but if, if you take um, the products of them, so if you take um, X square for X in this family, and then intersect, then um, intersect two um, elements in, um, okay, if you take, uh, then you intersect X square with X prime square, then they will have uh, a big intersection. So, it, it, um, so because you will get an interval around zero, interval of the form minus one, minus epsilon and one plus epsilon, and, and they will be in the common intersection. But you cannot guarantee um, so any yeah. So if you don't go to the product, then the finite intersection will not. You cannot guarantee it's big. And if you go to a higher product, then you can take uh, more intersections. And um, so the um, yeah. So the proof is more or less like. Um, it's technical but elementary, and one of the um, things we uh, try to figure out is to generalize the index of subgroups to uh, arbitrary sets. And um, so, an index. So, if H is a subgroup of G, then the index of H in G is defined as the number of disjoint left G cosets of H that covers G. And if you have um, subsets instead of subgroups, then there are two possible ways to uh, generalize this definition. Um, the first one is you take the minimal number of left x translates y that covers x, uh, but you, you cannot um, guarantee they are disjoint. And the second one is uh, you take maximum number of disjoint left x translates of y, um, so if you take this definition, then you cannot guarantee they, these disjoint translates will cover, uh, um, cover X. And um, it turned out that B works better. Um, how, um, and um, so there's a, a by an easy observation um, using Husha's uh, covering lemma, uh, you can see there's a relation between B and A. So if you X, Y is a maximal disjoint family of X translates of Y, then X will be covered by X zero Y times Y inverse. So you, you cannot guarantee uh, X is covered by X zero Y, but you have to multiply more, uh, um, yeah, again by Y. 
um, then it X will be covered by it. Um, so this is uh, this shows why you need to go to higher product kind of. Okay, so um, so I, I list the sketch of the, my proof here. So it's like um, a, finding fixed point in some, you build some lattice and then you find some, uh, then, then there's some order in this lattice and then you kind of find a fixed point and you, you want them to be, uh, have a uniform bond. So it so the so in the end you, what you get is to uh, convertible with the original thing, and um, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so, are there any questions? Um, so which which step in the sketch does the ultra product come in? Um, so the ultra product is just to uh, to say that you have a bond uh, that doesn't depend on the family you start with. Uh, it's only depend on uh, the k and n. So the these um, parameters k and n, uh, because if you don't have a bond. Uh, then you can take um, counter uh, um, larger and larger counter examples, and then in the arch product, it's still uniformly k approximate subgroups and commensurable with each other. And then, by the theorem, you get something commensurable with. Uh, uh, yeah, then the, yeah, by the theorem, you get a. Um, uh, uh, approximate subgroup commensurable with each other uh, with the family, and then that will be a con uh, contradiction. So yeah, so the yeah, yeah. the yeah, it's not really essential. This just to get you have a boss. So you're you're taking a ultra product of counter examples. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh -huh. I see. Okay. Um, are there any other questions from the in person people? It's hard for me to look at both. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, man. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Hi. So uh, maybe first question is that, so in fact, you never use the classification of approximate group in your proof, do you? No, you? no. Uh, and it's, uh, it, we don't assume it's finite. Uh, ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, uh, in particular, it applies to finite, yeah. So, so the second question is, um, do you have a certain guy of Stirling, uh, I cannot pronounce, really pronounce the name, Stirling theorem for convex set? So for example, let's say you look at convex subset of R2, and um, mm -hmm. you know that all of them are commensurable to one another, then can one, can one conclude that actually there must be a convex set that are commensurable to all of them? Maybe I mean I mean a Banyakov and Frank's um, proof uh, was very general, so they need to you need to verify there are some axioms. So these family of things satisfy some uh, axioms. They call it um, need not uh, family. What is it called? I forgot. So if they satisfy this, then you can always find uh, the Schlichten theorem always holds. But yeah, but uh, it doesn't apply to approximate subgroups. But I maybe it will apply to uh, convex sets. Uh, okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Uh, can I just ask quickly, Tinshan? Uh, in the example uh, you gave us, mm -hmm. uh, you can get it either. Uh, you can get the invariant group either. Uh, sorry, approximate group as a union or as an intersection. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the theorem, you stated you say that you need to get an, an in, a union, right? Do you know yeah, you so, have? Do you, yeah. Yeah, we don't. Uh, so the the thing is, we thought um, um, uh, we don't. So we we can just uh, finish by uh, step five, and um, 
if we can finish by step five, then we get a intersection. But if you, uh, but the intersection union are just a dual. So if you can do by intersection, then you can do by uh, union. But uh, we couldn't get a uniform bound. So if you take the all the intersections, then you don't really know if you get something that is commercial. So we need to do a dual construction, and then the union of everything is good. So we are not sure if this is necessary. So maybe you can just finish by step five mm -hmm. and yeah. it will be good already. Yeah, I was wondering, yeah, if you can work, do it fully, for example, in the type definable uh, category, uh, if you start, yeah. yeah, but uh, okay. So the proof doesn't give it. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, one more. Okay, thanks. Hi, thanks. Um, just a quick question. So, if you assume that the family chi is is definable, it's a definable. I mean, it's a, it's a definable family of of yeah in in G. Then does that? Can you say something about the definability of of H? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, to yeah, actually, to apply um a wash theorem, we need kind of definability. So we yeah. Yes, yes, you can. It's definable. Right. Okay. Is it final? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Maybe just. Um, oh yeah. Go ahead. Also, I'm just thinking that so, if you handle measure approximate proof, would this this thing also still go through? Will your proof still go through if you have a measure? Sorry. What was? Um. If so, does your proof? Will your proof still go through if we handle measure approximate proof instead of approximate proof? Or is the same? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in the definition of approximate proof doesn't, doesn't matter whether it's measurable or not. Uh, so the measure approximate subgroups are like the measures are uh, similar. My, my question doesn't make any sense because approximate doesn't matter whether it's measure or not. Uh, yes. Do we have any other questions? All right, so let's thank Ting Shang again. Thank you.